We were the 17 inch that. Macintosh booklet style personal computer. Yep. We're recording in both places and ready to roll. All righty, I'll start things off then. <clears throat> Coming up on Roundabout, Chinese quality strikes again. No, I'm not talking about lead slathered toys or melamine tainted toothpaste. We're going nautical this time. States are cracking down on dogs behind the wheel, and Family Guy rips on the Mazda Miata, and Papa ain't happy. Like a popular fried chicken fast food chain, Roab comes seasoned with 11 herbs and spices. Roundabout is sponsored by Advance Auto Parts and by Amazon.com. <laughs> Visit our website, roundaboutshow.com, <laughs> to get up to $30 off your next purchase. Do you want to redo that just because you have... Ben giggling in the background. No. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I, that was I make, me. <laughs> could, could I make a suggestion on the redo also? Um, if you have, the way it sounds, it sounds like you get a 30% discount from Amazon too. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it totally you. Skip Amazon. No, in I which wanna, case, I'll definitely, definitely be going. Amazon <laughs> off for everyone. Okay, here we go. I, I got it. I can get my two $15 DVDs for free then. Yes. <laughs> wow, right. that's better than a being a Prime member. <laughs> that's right, Eric. All right. Roundabout is sponsored by Amazon.com and by Advance Auto Parts. Visit our website, roundaboutshow.com, to get up to $30 off your next auto parts purchase. From the San Gabriel, California Mission. Where is that? The mission from San Gabriel, damn if I remember. Oh, I'm Bob Hall from hireme at $800anhour.com. Please. In Long Beach, California, I'm Michelle Naranjo from autobytel.com. In Dearborn, Michigan, from RumbleStrip.net and IMAX Web, I'm Eric Tritko. From the dreary heights of Ben's second-story second apartment, I'm your host, Craig Cole. And I'm Tesla Coil Specialist, Ben Sanders. Is that how you pronounce it? I guess. This is Roundabout. Welcome to Roundabout, episode number 102. Is that 102? Our weekly chat covering car culture, vehicle reviews, and some of the auto news. Well, something's going on there, Ben. Hey, wait, where did Eric go? He's a fading spectra. <laughs> go ahead, read that one more time, Eric. Yeah. Welcome to Roundabout, episode number 102, or is that just 102? Our weekly chat covering car culture, vehicle redu vehicle redu redus. <laughs> <laughs> it Which is going to be one like, of those did nights. You guys. The IQ already? Yes. <laughs> Haiku Cuny's little that body work. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone quiet. Welcome to Roundabout, episode 102, our weekly chat covering car culture, vehicle reviews, and some of the auto news you probably missed. Go us. Look at us. We're just rolling up that odometer. 102 already? ka -chink. Can you believe ka -chink. that? We're out of, we're past the certified pre-owned warranty period now. <laughs> That's right. So uh, we're, we're flying on a wing and a prayer at this point. You on that aftermarket warranty now, Craig? <laughs> yes. I've got to ask a question here. You know, before I left on my self-imposed exile overseas, they didn't have this certified pre-owned. Now, what is it? It's, they certify somebody owned the car before you did? Exactly. Just like a reverse okay. sensing system. You are now in cool. reverse. <laughs> so that is the voice, the dulcet tones of none other than Bob Hall. Now, I'm sure our loyal listeners should be familiar with uh, Mr. Jim Hall, who we've, we've had on our program many times and who is an integral Did part of really the Autoline family. you really have to family. mention him? Seriously. Michelle, it's out of <laughs> Can respect. Can Bob just not be Bob? He is the, the evil one. He's the evil one. <laughs> yes. Oh, calm down, Jim. I'm Bob. We have to mention. Just it's have a, another it's... comfort stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, it's called respect. The elder Hall deserves respect. We have Elder to. Elder by how much? Eight minutes. Seven minutes. Seven. Okay. <laughs> I stand corrected. Remember they used to have the ad for Virginia Slim, the seven-minute cigarette. The doctor went out for a single cigarette. Okay, let's deliver the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, your doctor smoked those? <laughs> Actually, most doctors smoke camels, according to ads you hear on 1953 radio shows. Well, they were the <laughs> safest. Had the most flavor, <laughs> right? And the cough. Hurt my but you weren't born, born in the 30s. Where you was like no, the 19, 20s. 1953. 1953. No, oh, that's quite a slam, Michelle. <laughs> He's not a dust I bowl know. baby. Let's be I'm honest. So, Bob There's Hall. No dust here. Bob, thank you for taking your time out of your schedule to join us. We do appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. Yes. Well, thank you. Like a, uh, eat a show. I, 
So, as I promoted last week, we are collecting, gathering, reaping questions from you, our, lo our uh, loyal viewers. Um, we're going to have an automotive expert on the program in the coming weeks, and we need your participation. Send us auto repair related and or maintenance questions. You can ship those off to roundaboutshow at gmail.com or... If that's just typing is just too difficult for you, you can also pick up a telephone and I guess type on the number pad. Uh, one five five nine Roab four one one in number numbers. That's one five five nine seven six two two four one one. It's our Google Voice line, and we'd love to hear your questions. And so of course, if you think that it's an issue that you can't just explain once, you know, and have it answered. We'll arrange to have you live on the line mm -hmm. with our automotive expert. Unnamed so. automotive expert. That's right, unnamed. It's mystery, mysterious. Ooh. Mr. E. Mr. E. Yes. But, not, but not the guy on our Facebook page who said to call him Mr. E. The Romanian e. gentleman, yes. Who was not Could you excuse me just a moment enough. here? I, I really need to confer with, with Alex and Michelle. They referred to him as, we're going to bring an automotive expert in. Like, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think a strike is in order here. You know, just because you and I. Occupy roundabout. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's our episode title. There you go. You mean you want okay. me to move my membership from Sesame Occupy Sesame Street to you? Yes. Anyway, send your one, questions one, in. One percent of Cookie Monsters consume ninety-nine percent of all cookies. <laughs> That's true. That's reason enough. <laughs> our all-star panel of automotive experts will answer your question. Is your torque converter? Stuttering. <laughs> what is that, Craigie? I don't yeah. even know. Exactly. What, that was. What, what color is it? <laughs> does, does your brake caliper have a lisp? Well, we will answer these questions and more. What color is it, Michelle? I don't know. That's up to you. Is it a Brembo? They're red. Mm. Even on Priuses. Priuses. Well, Priuses, speaking. It should, be, it should have been painted green. <laughs> speaking, speaking of Michelle. Miss Shelley, I understand you, you're an animal enthusiast, and you have our first article, which also deals with animals. Funny I don't how know that worked you, out. I, I'm a reluctant animal enthusiast. You wait, 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 reluctant? You have like a herd, <laughs> and one's gonna have puppies. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting ready to have like the complete barnyard. Michelle's Ark. <laughs> when <laughs> the polar true. ice caps melt, better have a boat it's ready. It's true, and you know, I'm I'm really lucky because. It, it, in my car, when I have it, I actually have a cargo net that comes up where I put my dogs behind it. But I do know these statistics. And an unrestrained 60-pound dog, not that I have a 60-pound dog because you they're should. both Big under 20. Awesome. You have a my horse, horse, though, on the other hand, is like 250. But uh, she, can't, she can't fit in the back of the car. Anyway, an unrestrained 60-pound dog has an impact force of 2,700 pounds. So that can really hurt in an accident. Several states, Connecticut, California, Massachusetts, Nevada, Washington, Oregon, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire, mm. now all require that a dog be tethered, like a little seatbelt. That's so cute, those little seatbelts. <laughs> or be kenneled in cars. If you're wondering what the, Im the force of impact is of Eric Tritko's own Lola, would be if the Mustang gets in an accident. I'm no physicist, but I do not think that that would be pretty. I mean, like, think about it. 60-pound dog flying in an accident mm -hmm. is 2,700 pounds. So Lola's like, what, 130? 350. 350. No, she's like 130 pounds. She's, she's, mm, she's bigger than that, I would venture. She's like a miniature horse. No, she's 130 or 132 pounds last time we took her to the vet. Well, Imagine right. if you threw on the brakes and that thing hit you in the back of the head. Like a, it'd but, be worse but, than but a Kleenex box. Isn't, isn't, isn't Eric's dog a chihuahua that was used in nuclear weapons research? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> in which case, it... it, it she's it, from it, it Los might, Alamos. Yeah, it might elevate, you know, levitate or something. Who can say? This is a mutant dog, you know. Uh, there was a 130-pound chihuahua. <clears throat> one, of the, uh, one of the early uh, series of of fifth gear, which they're known for doing a lot of interesting crash test stuff, as uh, as I sent a video to Craig Cole to find so he could see what happens to his car when he crashes at 120 miles an hour. Um, they did a thing where they had like laptops and other things sitting on the back parcel shelf of a car, and when it ran in, when it hit a, a barrier at like 30 or 35 miles an hour, and just the impact and the damage oh, that's yeah. just just yeah. random stuff that you have sitting in your car flying around in a in a crash mm -hmm. will do so. 
No, no, no joke for a minute. The <laughs> One of the guys who was one of the first presidents of Renault after the French government nationalized it was driving a Renault frigate, hit an ice patch. Frigat? And his, a frigate. Fr, it looks like frigate, ah. but not frigate. They are French, you know? What can you say? Oui. But uh, he had his Who's your husband? I forgot. <laughs> he's, he had his briefcase on the uh, back parcel shelf, and when the thing hit, spun and he hit the brakes, it, it broke his neck. Oh. And they needed a new a new uh, CEO. So yes, yeah, that's that's not good to have that stuff floating around. Use your car as a closet. Oh. That that or was a, a, a government inside job. It sounds like it was too perfect. It, could be, it was government owned. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Be of Charles de Gaulle one too many times. That's right, right, you know. Um, actually, they mentioned it's okay to have the dog the dog kennel, right? So you can you can put your dog in the dog kennel. A giant box that can fly around. What about tethering the dog kennel then? Not right. required. <laughs> anyway. Moving okay. along from pets, Eric, you always wanted to be a seaman, didn't you? In the Navy? <laughs> <laughs> was no. No. It was, uh, really, Eric? You know, I didn't know this about you. <laughs> now is your chance to sail the high seas. <laughs> See the world. Yeah. Well, giving <laughs> giving new meaning to the term Chinese junk, um, Named Zhujiang, this supposed luxury yacht is a uh, $2.7 million project financed by China's Zhongang Group, and it was built by the Lansau Ministry of Transportation. Is that a kind of grilled pork they serve at buffets? Uh, it's easy for you to say all that, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, this, uh, this yacht, uh, though, was rather interesting because when they launched it, it sunk immediately. Now, no word if these are the same people who are responsible for the crash worthiness, the crash worthiness of the uh, Brilliance 6, which failed <laughs> end cap crash testing. Um, anyway, so Chinese transportation, transportation officials are saying that the accident was a result of improper handling from the operators who, quote, miscalculated the water levels causing the uh, rear half to sink and then causing the whole boat to sink. Uh, it's incredible that in a country that's been building boats for 4,000 years that they can't even get launching a boat correct. It's wait, pretty hilarious. Correct. Wait, you, know, wait. Wait, you know how they, they, they – there's all the comment about how you know the, the Mr. Obama is socialist and everything. Okay, The way you can tell he's not socialist is he handles PR. Now, the Chinese screwed this up. They're a socialist country. If they had their PR right, they would say – this was the first, not luxury yacht, luxury yacht submarine. <laughs> See? Well, the, it wouldn't the, be a luxury not, yacht. Not it would PR. be a... That's he, that's he can tell a real socialist. They don't know what PR is. Okay? It, would, it would also be a proletariat yacht. But, but, but the point is, no, not anymore. Uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> no, no, Deng Xiaoping was the guy that got that all sorted out. So you guys can be Chinese again. But the thing is, it was an opportunity, right? And, and what is it? The, the socialists don't understand that. Okay, that's what they blew it. No PR, that's the dead giveaway. They have PR, they ain't socialists. Full stop. Film at 11. <laughs> well, um, mm, yeah. so they got, they got this boat launched pretty wrong, as uh, obviously it sank immediately. Um, some other parts on cars, Bob, are pretty bad as well. And there's well, something that know, sticks out in your mind. What's going on here? One of my all-time favorite pieces on a car is the spoiler. And you, you, by the way, which was first – called a spoiler on a, and I'm going to get the year wrong, but it was a late 50s, early 60s uh, Ferrari uh, sports car, not a formula car that was being raced. And I think it might have been uh, Gurney or Richie Ginther driving it, and they referred to it as a spoiler because they put this thing on and it spoiled the looks of the car. <laughs> well, ever since that time, designers have been given the opportunity to spoil the looks of cars. <laughs> and uh, if, if you, I mean, like, I, I pulled some images out here and, you look at like this this first shot of the Saturn has a nice little lip spoiler on the Saturn coupe. Remember the Saturn coupe? I think I'm the only person in the world who likes that car. And and then of course when they made it a red line, they wanted to make it a red line to your eyes. Sure, so it wasn't a flat this, line. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but that that wing did that car no favors. Not that it was beautiful to begin with, but it was okay. But this this I mean, if if it weren't for wings, you wouldn't have any Subaru STIs or Mitsubishi Lancer Evos. The, the guys, though, who, who take it, I think, and I mean, if you have to say, who's the serial offender with wings on cars? It would have to be Ford, okay? Now, some of the stuff was, was you know, people in the United States were deprived of it. Like, they had this little uh, Sierra, which was the famous Mercure XR4. Remember that, baby? Mm, what a mm. fine vehicle. 
they had this bi-level wing that made the, the little one on the Mercure look minor, and it, it put this second wing right across your view line of the mirror. So it was it was form ruining function. And I guess when they did the follow up car, which was the second generation front wheel drive escort in Europe that they <laughs> made a Cosworth version, they raised it up out of the window line, which of course made it look even worse. Okay. Now I'm sure there are people out there that love wings. That's okay. Remember, people actually voted for Hitler in 1932, so it's okay. You can like those wings. Well, look, at, they're great uh, for tailgating. Look what you could put stuff there, and it won't <laughs> fall down. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, actually, you could put if yeah, let's say you wanted to carry. It was a cold evening, and you bought some something. You, ah, perfect for Detroit. You had that escort wing, and you put little hooks on it, and like the stuff you buy at the market that needs to be frozen. Like a like a washing a machine, car, you could strap the there. bag from that. <laughs> you could strap a washer system. there, Bob. But but where this went completely nuts to me is you had Ford of Europe, which is always doing its own thing, and then you had the guys in Dearborn, and then Dearborn do the the. Second generation Taurus SHO. Uh, now, second generation Taurus was a pretty ghastly car to begin with, and you think you can't make that thing look any worse. Until the cam gears slip. <laughs> ah well. Look, look what, what do you want? Okay. <laughs> I mean, do you want quality? You bought an SHO. Okay. It, it's it's not like it's not like you bought you know a Mercedes or a BMW. Come on. No? But the yeah. SHO then after these giant wings on these these ghastly Euro Fords, they had this thing that that looked like a skateboard made of fiberglass glued to the deck lid, and that was a wing. It was, it was. I mean, you wonder, what are these guys thinking? It's for downforce, but Bob. Is it really? It did it, it push the car down in the style? It spoils <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> it's cosmic. There's something, there's something cosmic there. I want it. It's very stylish. You're secretly an SHO fan, aren't you? Well, you, I, you know, love that narrow-angle V8. Come on. Oh, yeah. When I was at Mazda, we had an original SHO6, and it was kind of a neat car. But it's it's typical Ford, and it's like the people that did the first one weren't allowed to do the second one. And a bunch of jealous uh, wannabes did the second one. And it came out looking like the turkey it was supposed to, a round rear window. I mean, what were they thinking? Hi. I, maybe they, one of the guys was a German bloke, and he wanted to wear a monocle, you know? But they put the <laughs> monocle on the back of the car. It would be very beautiful. You'll like it. You're Americans. Go follow orders. <laughs> Uh, there you go. Uh, wow. Ford, the serial offenders, they've spoiled more well, than anybody else. Speaking of offending, breaking laws, do you remember the kids with the cool parents? They let their offspring stay up all night, drink coffee, and even have go-karts. It was awesome. Well, the dad in this next article has the competition licked. Now, that sounds like uh, a, <laughs> a Michigan man was arrested by Detroit police last week for letting his nine-year-old daughter drive. Now, that sounds like a really irresponsible and reckless thing to do. A full-size van is much too large of a vehicle for a preteen, but the gentleman in question was wasted drunk, and his daughter was playing DD. Surprisingly, the girl was doing a fine <laughs> job. <laughs> no. <laughs> Designated driver. Surprisingly, the girl was doing a fine job, but if it weren't for the surveillance cameras at a sit-go gas station where they stopped for snacks, the pair might never have been caught. Her father's loudmouth boasting about her driving skills was all caught on tape. So far, the man has had a court hearing and been released on a $25,000 personal recognizance bond. The kicker in all this, the girl had to use a booster seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I, I, but, you know, the scary part is, disregard the father's complete lack of judgment. Is it, in fact, she was probably driving better than he was. Exactly. She I mean, was using her turn signal. I love that he has, like, the Starsky and Hutch, like, swoop on his van. <laughs> it's classy. It, it's, it, you, you know, it's hard to beat the timeless lines of the, Sierra, of the uh, Express or Savannah. Mm. Beautiful. I, I, like it. I like how you can be, be fined and have to go to court for something that you weren't caught doing live. Huh? That didn't involve killing somebody yeah. or theft. She was, so you think this is okay, in other words? It should be. I'm not saying it's okay. I think it's just interesting that, you know. Well, they catch you know, it, They catch him driving up, or her driving up to the pump. She should be in char in trouble. He okay, was the he passenger. Okay, he wants to take a bet on whether or not he's even married or ever married he the was, baby mama. He didn't. They're separated <laughs> before her birth. But, uh, yeah, funny story. I wish I could have driven at nine. That would have been awesome. My, uh, okay, my dad I actually... Did. Let my, yeah, my dad let my brother and I do that with his Austin Healey, but he took us he took us out to the Rose Bowl parking lot and uh, just let us loose there, and we actually were quite um, reasonable about it. Wow. We Didn't... weren't on a public road, and and uh, we didn't have that much bourbon. 
<laughs> at the time. And then Austin Healy would. And then Austin Healy wouldn't drift. Sad. Uh, uh, it was. It, 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 I, I didn't know what drifting was then, except drift. <laughs> I thought it was a laundry detergent. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's drift. Sorry. Speed, well, <laughs> I mean, I drove at that age. I mean, we had the 47 Willis, and my dad would just put the windshield down and put his feet up on the hood of the truck, the, the Jeep, and I would, he would drink beer, and I would was just... This, and this... you would drink vodka or wine coolers. <laughs> no, Michelle, no, no, Michelle? I was like a little kid. Well, yeah, wine driving? coolers. <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> Michelle, was this driving like over to Terminal Island or something? No, I grew up in New Mexico, so I was just driving over like... You know, countryside where there's miles and miles of miles and miles <laughs> of nothing like yeah, you, okay. you had the Rose Bowl parking lot I had like nothing for miles <laughs> have you ever been to the Rose Bowl parking lot <laughs> yes I have <laughs> it's just a smaller version of New Mexico <laughs> it's true well Michelle you're a lady so you're you're always up about style and, and fashion and a very right? pretty one at I that. wasn't going to show you that live <laughs> so Ben you love me but this is a love triangle if Morty hears about it <laughs> I don't want to be around when the first flying. Can I have the pay per view, per view rights? Hang on a second. HBO, <laughs> <laughs> I got a deal for you. You know, Bob, like Ben <laughs> has my face wash and my pajamas there. He's wearing them right now, both of them, actually. Mm. Anyway, you're a lady. You like to stay up on the fashion trends. And I hear ponytails are coming back. Well, I guess. I mean, <laughs> apparently, according to GM Marketing, I, I, it's kind of weird. It's nice to see that GM Marketing and PR are on the same course, meaning that they're not on the same page. The Buick Verano touted as the subcompact, high luxury, higher performance car at four inches shorter than the Regal, but it's just a lipstick on a cruise, is being marketed as having headrests engineered to accommodate a ponytail. <laughs> <clears throat> Given that Buick... Buick's PR, I know. Given that Buick's PR is trying hard to sell their wares to the male-oriented three-series crowd, they really believe that's their like target segment. With their technology, I guess they're going for that small, non-existent segment of ponytail sporting D bags who usually buy into three. Are you series talking about Christian Comover? <laughs> used market. Um, used, yes, two hundred twenty thousand. It miles. kind of sounds to me like GM has hired Chrysler's marketing department. I. I, I mean, honestly, like, everything I hear from Buick is that they're really trying to target the males. Well, Michelle, and... that's, that's one thing I wanted to point out. You said male-oriented 3-series crowd. There aren't any males that drive 3-series. Um, uh, oh, no, they, are... they, they yes, they are. They have fades and up <gasps> and... No, 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 M3. <laughs> M3. That doesn't count three as a three series, series Bob. Oh, yes, it does. Like, no, that, and that's used. That's used. This is. I mean, it's kind. It's just kind of weird that they're doing that. Look, I, 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 I haven't driven a Verano yet, but the people I have talked to who have, all rave. They say it's a damn great car to drive. Have, have you guys had any wheel time in it yet? Uh, next week, Thursday, Friday, I'll okay. be driving it. I have. I have heard nothing but good stuff about it. And and same you know, here. Same here. But you know what? I and I love the 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 GS was like super fun. The Regal yeah. was well, super the, fun. The, the standard Regal Turbo is a damn good car. I yeah. mean, the, the GS damn is, fine is, is actually yeah. good. Sounds like somebody good. watched my video review. It's a damn but good car. But their target audience isn't women. Hmm. hmm. So those ponytails, where are they coming from? Those kids that would have the little stumpy one that's like three inches long, two inches long. <laughs> how, hey, how about, the the guy, how about the guy that used to be an actor that now is a sheriff in Louisiana? What's his name? Um, Steven oh, Seagal? Harry, Harry Connick. Oh, yeah, 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 that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do they have, do they have, they have Ronos in the police force there? They'll be happy. So here's what I'm confused mm. about. I thought if, if these headrests were designed to accommodate ponytails, shouldn't they like have the holes in them like the no. old Pontiacs? <laughs> Like your baseball cap that you wear all the time, Ben. Exactly like that. Well, you know, I, let me let me just okay. I got to jump in here just for a second. Maybe no. Have our, oh, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, don't be, be nice a to our guests. No. Just, joke, just joking. Um, maybe he's having maybe, too much fun to leave. You know, for, you can have it appeal to guys because a guy also has to think about significant other. Okay. When it's true. Mazda, Trophy wives have ponytails. No, when I was when I was working at Mazda, we didn't do cars for women or for men. We made mm. sure that both could be happy with 
Okay. Then we let them figure out what it's like. The old thing: we're going to position this car in this 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 location. The manufacturer doesn't position the car; the customers do. So you're saying you sold cars to transgender folk? If hey, their money spends as well as anybody else's. (laughs) Okay. Even rednecks. Um, but no, I, I guess the, the, the point being here that you can do a car that is focused at men and targeted at men, but it's got to make women happy too. Well, if they've got room for a ponytail, there's lots of growth there, right? Could be. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't know about hair and ponytails and, you know. <laughs> I have some growth. Can you see? I need a haircut, so. Well, it's nearly an growth, inch and a half. I have growth up here, but that's another story I'll tell <laughs> well, That's a different podcast. Uh, Eric, why don't you change the subject for us quickly? Yeah, so the uh, Marchi Mobile LMMMMMMT RV uh, being tagged as that's a... That's easy for you to say. Exactly. If it doesn't hurt that I already have a natural stutter anyways. Um, <clears throat> that would be the Pino talking. mm <laughs> The what? Pinot Grigio. Oh, the Pinot, no. Um, Tagged as a mansion on wheels with a functional fireplace. Uh, While it's not the most opulent RV that we've ever talked about on the roundabout, it's certainly one of the most stylistically challenged. Uh, The nose of the machine looks like something uh, between a 60s acid trip with elements of the GM Futureliner, um, while from the cabin portion back, it looks like a luxury yacht from the late 90s. Chinese luxury yacht? Not a Chinese one, I hope. No, not a no. More late '90s Italian yacht styling, where it's all white with a it's like swoop, Cyclops. It's swooping creepy. band of black glass on it to give it a, you know, a certain look. Yeah, that, that's why I said the future liner part comes from the fact that you drive from the center and it has this big center window in it and two smaller windows off to the side. I wonder if Gordon Murray was involved with that. <laughs> well, J- yeah. uh, Bob, you know what this reminds me of? Car Dominium. Uh, what's that? Car Dominium. This would be a great foundation, wouldn't it? It would be the best foundation for the Car Dominium, absolutely. Yeah, mm, I've got to go check about uh, some property for the Car Dominium. So do you have, you have to explain to us, what's what the, car the Car Dominium? The, the Car Dominium is, is a new housing development that it uses automobiles, okay, as kind of modules. And you can make it really kind of modern and futuristic where you, you, you approach from the top and there's like a nice lawn and you walk down the stairs to the side. And here's like a half-buried Mitsubishi Diamante. Okay? <laughs> and that would be like, be like the, the first home. Okay? This, this would definitely be either Condo, Mondo Condo or maybe the uh, Palazzo. Con- Car Dominium coming soon. To could you, near you. Could you build so it in? In, other, uh, in but... other words, you spent too much time at the Earthship complex in New Mexico, <laughs> didn't you, Bob? Um, no, actually, the, uh, the, the, the Capitol building, the parliament in uh, Australia is built like that. It's partially underground. You can go play uh, football, what you call soccer here, mm-hmm. on, the, uh, on the roof. And actually, most of the politicians would be better off doing that. <laughs> well, Bob, you mentioned you're looking for real estate, perhaps in the car Dominican Republic. <laughs> ah, what a perfect place for it. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. exactly. But my God, Eric, this thing is hideous. <laughs> yeah, like the the you know the where you would expect the grill to be is actually higher than I don't know. It's just it's 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 a whole lot of backwards on this thing. And mm. um, Jeremy Jeremy Clarkson in one of the Top Gear segments where they all built their own RVs. This sort of has elements of that, and it. it just is very very odd. And then it has several different. They show several different interior uh, configurations of the car, uh, and it could be anywhere from something which is very. Very nice and minimalistic to something so gaudy it makes uh, the house, the interior of a house, uh, housewives in New Jersey's home, look like something yep. that's uh, ready for architectural digest. You know you what know. it reminds me of is one of those fish that lies on the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> the coelacanth. <laughs> yeah, I it think is a bottom eat... feeder. It does have a very bottom feeder look to it. I think the, we the, eat no, the one. driver, the driver is the bottom feeder. <laughs> <laughs> the mouth breather. Zing. You know what, Bob? It seems today that on TV, it's violence in movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Too many violins on television. Oh, no, that's the the symphony orchestra. So all you see is violence in movies and sex on TV. We're lucky there's a family guy. (laughs) Yeah. Lucky there's a family guy, Craig. Lucky somebody's picking it up. (laughs) Thank you, Ben. What kind of family would be involved in that sort of thing? Oh, what's going You are the father, undisputed champion. You sired a very important car, a sports car, no less. The Mazda Miata. The MX-3. Yes, Ma- Matsuda. 
。やだ。ロードスター。You know the ロードスター。You are the father. That is your progeny. Well, we came across this、yes. week a clip from Family Guy that, that mentions said car. And let's start off by playing that clip. Oh, cool. I like stuff that's promotional. I will.、Um, my name is Greg, and、uh, I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Hi Greg. Greg. One fateful night, I、uh, got behind the wheel of my brand new sports car, <laughs> flying <laughs> drunk. I was responsible for the death of an innocent eight year old girl. What kind? What? What kind of car? You said you had a sports car. That's cool, but what kind? It was a Miata. Oh, come on. That's not a sports car. How, how does that even kill a kid? What, what, what's a hit her over the head? <laughs> That's a legitimate sports car. Nope. Next. j i m m y Them's got words gotta hurt, Bob. It doesn't really. Okay? It doesn't really.、Um, the whole thing is what's, what's a sports car? Okay? If, 2002 if, Ford Focus Miata, ZX3. Oh, ZX3, I'm getting excited.、Um, the <laughs> Every time he comes on roundabout, he's getting excited. Mercury Capri.、Mm. <laughs> um, I, 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 you know, the, first of all, the Miata ain't about fast. You know, the, 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 remember, if you can't go fast with 90 horsepower, 900 isn't going to help you. Okay? And the, the Miata is it's a fun car. If people think that's a sports car, great. If they don't think it's a sports car, great. Because most of the people that bitch and moan about it and say it ain't a sports car have never driven one. It's awesome.、Okay. I had one a、you、few know, they, days they, ago. They look forward to things like, oh, 1968、uh, Novas, you know, and other quality rides. But that's yeah. okay. You know. I mean, Bob, do you remember like, when it was being introduced in Southern California and there used to be that、uh, wild animal park in Orange County that is now where the Verizon Amphitheater was, right? Yeah, a lion, lion gonna, Country Safari. Exactly, Lion Country Safari. And they did like an initial consumer email of like hand raisers that were interested. And I think they sent it out to like 5,000 people. And they were supposed to be doing like these consumers are supposed to be coming to, you know, get their chance to drive the Miata when it was introduced. And people were so excited about it, they had over 75,000 responses. Wow.、Yep. Right? I mean, it started selling at over $50,000. You no, know, I mean, the, the, the people who had early, early deliveries and, and were offering them up. Yeah, no, it was nuts. It was absolutely、yeah. nuts. So, you know, the, my, my viewpoint on it is, is that, that, you know, the, and a lot of the people, it was funny to read、uh, on that website which had posted that, read some of the comments. And there's an old saying that the best car you've driven is the best car you know. And it's pretty obvious, you know, these guys haven't driven a lot of cars. Okay. And I particularly like the ones that say it's not a sports car and they've never driven it. That's okay. You know, they're, they're entitled to it. Is it a family sedan? No, it's a chick car. <laughs>、ah, okay, I got to tell you something on this. It is a chick car. Make no bones about it.、Okay? That's because I always thought it'd be neat to have a car that attracted women. <laughs> oh, burn.、Okay. Some, some, some guys might not. They might want a car that attracts guys. They can buy a Chevelle with a big engine. That's okay. But.、Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was you know just me. I, you know, it's okay. If somebody wants a car to attract guys. That's cool. But, but, but it's a chick car. But yeah, it attracts women. You got a problem with that? Cool. I, I've only known one woman that ever had one, and the rest of the people that I know that have them or have had them were guys. And the one woman I know <clears> that <throat> had it only wanted to get laid by guys. <laughs> really? Well, that's convenient. <laughs> Well, the hood was aluminum, so you wouldn't want to do it there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so well, as, Bob, as, Bob, as the, oh, as go the ahead, father、Eric. of the Miata, what's your, what's your thought on adding an engine that only weighs, or changing out the engine that only weighs about 100, 150 pounds more, but has four times the horsepower and putting if, it in there? If, if that's what you're after, great. Go right ahead. You know, we, we, had, we had looked, it's like, We, we, we had, yeah, I remember we had a, when we did this car, we had a glass ceiling because we couldn't、yeah. make it better faster than an RX 7. Right. So we focused on making it so much fun that, you know, you drive the car, you can't help smile. And it, we just, it was a different direction. You know, oh, I know. If, if, you, if you want more power and such, that's great. The option's there. Okay. But, But the fun was the, there. It's, it's not what the car's about. Okay. And, and again, if you miss that part, that's okay. If you buy the car, <laughs> I couldn't care less. No, and the、I、best part. The, the, the best part of a Miata is that you can drive that car at, 90% at fairly legal speeds、um, and, have, and, get, and, and have more of a challenge to your driving skill than you could at saying a, a,、yep. a Porsche GT3 RS, which on the, on the road, even if you're pushing hard, you're using 
thirty percent of the capability of the car, and you're you know at three times the legal speed limit. So it's yeah. you know, and and no, in I, a sense, you're actually working working it harder than you know, than, than anything else, unless you can get to a track. So you mm-hmm. know, we it's, we we had we had a thing, and I mentioned earlier about chick cars, male focused, female. We didn't we we did that car gender neutral. Okay, the only thing we did do, we had this funny sign that the Japanese particularly when we put it up. This is in Japan. They, they looked at it and said, "Can you explain that?" The sign said, "It must be a good Corolla." Uh. And the Japanese image of a sports car is it's a vehicle you drive only on the weekends and only to go to an event. And we said, we want it so you can drive it every day if you need to. You know, uh-huh. if, if you, you, you do shopping, you can put some groceries in it. Not a lot, but you can put some in. But for single people, for some people, it would be the only car that they had. And that's therefore it had to be a decent basic automobile. Livable car. It had, it, had, it had to put this big grin on your face. So we were working with a real different set of parameters than most people do on performance cars. And, you know, I, if somebody wants to put a V8 in it, great. Well, Bob, right. just, can you explain what – were you the designer of the car, chief engineer? What what role did you play in the Miata? I, 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 I came up with this dumbass con- concept of having it rear drive and having it a convertible and the basic kind of dimensional package of okay. the car and, and kind of what it was supposed to be about, not yeah. not maximum G-force cornering and this and the other thing. A lot of people did. I, I really – I'm a, a little bit uncomfortable with the idea of father of Miata. If you had to give one person – the job it would probably be uh, Toshihiko Hirai, who was the program manager, because he took all these crazy ideas and he made it into a real car. Okay, so you're and, Godfather. And where is he now? He's uh, he's actually a uni prof in Hiroshima. He's teaching uh, engineering in Hiroshima. Good engineer too, damn good engineer. And the guy he handed it to, Kijima-san, Kijima-san was one of the original chassis guys. He knows the car inside and out. So it's been a good group doing it. And I'll be honest, the first generation car I like for a number of reasons being involved with it. The third generation car, the current one, I like second most, the, particularly the facelift. The original version, they had some front suspension problems and didn't handle as brilliantly as it could. But the second generation car, I have to admit, I'm not a fan of. Okay, It mm. just kind of got kind of a little bit heavy and stupid and had nothing to show for it. Okay, mm. And it went from – when we did the original car, we had a document, one page in the, the vehicle concept that said, let's design this car so we don't have to change it for 10 years. So it kept the design relatively simple. The second car went – very state of the moment with the scallop sides and the curve, this and that, and it aged a lot faster. Yeah, today's so, car I think is very pretty. The, yeah, uh, the only reason that blast to yeah. drive. Oh. The only reason I can't own a Miata, Lola won't fit. Mm-hmm. So we have a we actually have a question from the chat room. Um, yes. Creon Breaking is saying, how much has the Miata grown in size from the beginning? A lot, okay, and not not only part of it was because there were complaints about people over a certain size, like about a five foot three, being able to get it. No, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> um, but it, some of it was done to accommodate the the people who wanted more space. We did that. But another aspect was the safety. Ah. Okay, you need to meet the new <laughs> standards they have. You need more real estate. The car's got to be physically bigger to give you crash zones. And that's one reason the cars, every car, take your pick, has gotten bigger. You want to see bigger? Look at original mini and park it next to an, uh, a mm-hmm. current mini. OK, so it's it's appreciably larger. I would I would say the car is probably as large, if not a frag longer than the FC second generation RX-7 was, which was out when we launched the original Miata in 1989. Right. But most most cars that happens. And again, it's 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 a side effect of modern cars that an increased weight. And now you've got to find ways to, to back down on the weight because that will be something you can address more easily than energy management when you make the car small. Just cut safety. That's what I say. <laughs> what the hell you need that for? It's so overrated. Is it typically longer rather than wider that happens? Yeah. Usually, what happens, I'll tell you a funny thing with a car. When you widen the car, let's say, by an inch, or you lengthen a car by an inch, you actually add more weight widening it than lengthening it. Okay? Width is usually to accommodate people. Now, there is an aspect that comes from width increase on side impact. Initially, with the side impact laws, laws, some people thought you had to put the body as close to the door as possible. Okay, and the theory was the acceleration rate of the body would not wouldn't go farther than the door would. That was the theory. Now you look, they like a little bit more real estate there. So there is an, a factor of safety, but most of the the increases that we've seen, the biggest increases on a percentage basis, yeah. have been in length to meet front and rear crush standards. Hmm. Does that help your your chat room person? <laughs> yeah, you know, we have one more question from the chat room, actually. They want to know if you have any information about the next Miata. 
You know, one of my favorite movies ever made is The Third Man <laughs> by Carol Reed. That is a great film. Even though there aren't right? any cars in it, there's a Jeep in it. It's a great movie. I strongly suggest you all see it. Orson Welles is in the movie for 17 minutes, and he steals the whole movie. It's great. He's like, what's that guy's name where he eats the people? Um, eats the people. Silence uh, of the girl. Lambs, that guy. Oh, okay. oh, oh I, th- I thought it was uh, uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Watchmen. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, so <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Well, Bob, thank you for your uh, Mazda analysis there. That is no worries. interesting stuff, yes. But I'm sleepy after all that. I don't know about you guys. Well, I think it's time. Can we have nap time now? No. Well, you guys can nap when I read my next story, which happens to be... A Roab on Sequitur. A Roab on Sequitur? Sequitur. Can I tell you about how I... (laughs) Nap time, Michelle. (coughs) All right. Why can't I shower while driving? How come there isn't a combination microwave television? The microvision. When will it be possible to grow animals on trees? Unfortunately, for now at least, the, the answer to, answers to these questions only exist in the realm of science fiction, but everyday researchers are unlocking solutions to these troubling issues. In fact, according to gizmag.com, a Brooklyn inventor just figured out how to sleep while standing up, and outside, no less. My mind is blown, too. He's come up with a contraption that looks like a metal skeleton. It attaches to subway air vents, uh, outside on New York sidewalks, and it supports a user's body in all the right places, although it does not look comfortable. It comes with a pair of dark sunglasses, some noise-canceling headphones, and even an umbrella, you know, for protection from the elements. Best of all, the whole kit and caboodle fits in a suitcase. Now hipsters can sleep on the streets and not look like a vagrant. Could you imagine taking a nap out on a busy sidewalk in New York? No, thank you. Let's hope this stays well, in the concept. <laughs> Now, I think you've got a guy there with a, a designer, an engineer, an inventor, whatever, with far too much time on his hands. I agree. He should be watching The Family Guy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't just be watching Family Guy. He should be watching The Family Guy. Yes. It, it uh, deserves the definite article because there is only one Family Guy. Now, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why the hell you would even want to do this in the first place. <laughs> Look how – what. It, it's an opportunity to be robbed, tagged with spray paint. <laughs> yes. <laughs> raped. Make the news. <laughs> Okay, hang on. Urinated upon? <laughs> He's asleep. You know, well, okay. I guess there is a big market in, uh, currently in New York for this. It's all the uh, Occupy Wall Street people. Right. Hmm. They can sleep more efficiently in a vertical position. You can stack more people in a given area. Brilliant. And, and one, other, one other benefit I see with winter coming is that there would be warm air coming out of the subway vents. Okay. Oh, brilliant. See, he's thinking ahead. It's environmentally friendly. It's taking waste heat and putting it to good use. Mm. He's not in his parents' basement. <laughs> Everyone's a comedian. So yeah, check out the pictures. <laughs> check out the pictures, roundaboutshow.com. And of course, you can follow all of the links from today's articles, roundaboutshow.com. We do appreciate that. But uh, we've got to take a quick break here, so please keep yourself predominantly in the same location because after the commercial interlude, we will be having more great times Yay. with Bob Hall, expert on everything automotive. Eric Tritko from rumblestrip.net, and of course... Michelle Naranjo, Miss Autobytel, will also keep this conversation on the boil. Coming up, the great, the great Usurper takes control of our Design Hall segment, and we review the video game Forza Motorsport 4, so stay What's tuned. What's that? Well, you're going to have to stay tuned to find out, Michelle. Oh. <laughs> She's genuinely surprised. Oh. Well, but right now I'm going to ask you to visit our website, roundaboutshow.com. If you go over to the right-hand sidebar of the webpage, you can see a lovely little advertisement for Advanced Auto Parts. And if you click on that, it's your ticket to huge savings. Isn't that right, Ben? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Advance is our, our friendly folks, our friends, friendly friends at Advance. Uh, <laughs> Are they friendly, friendly, friend, friend, friends? They're not and with benefit pals. friends, though, yes. So if you spend... They also work at Friendly's Restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can get the ice cream cone. Are you friends on Facebook? You could be friend Roo. Bob, are you on friend Roo? I don't know friend Roo, but I will be. be as soon as you invite me. Yes. <laughs> it's beta only. <laughs> it's, get that invite out to you. Friend Roo is the roundabout one. social network. Mm-hmm. I used to have 14 beta machines, okay? I doubt beta you're... Beta Max? Beta Max is, yes. I have, what about I U-Matic? I beta takes. U-Matic. Anyway, if you spend $30 at advance, you can save 10 bucks. If you hit $50, you can take... Uh, $20 off that bill. This is getting better. Hold on, Ben. Are you sitting down? 
and yeah. There's more. If you spend a hundred dollars, you can take a samurai sword, chop thirty bucks right off the top. <laughs> and ba- Bob, by my estimation, that's nearly a third. Can you believe that? Does it make that sound? Does it go like exactly like that? <laughs> so. Again, to get these savings, you have to go to our website, roundaboutshow.com, and follow the link in the sidebar. And when you check out on the website, you have to enter the promo code, which is listed on our website right below the ad. So make sure you do that, and we will get credited for all of the wonderful auto parts you purchase. Now, if um, you spend $75 or more with Advanced, you are eligible for free shipping. They will deliver minute, your order right to your Wait. home. Wait, that's business. free shipping on top of the, the thirty dollars off? Yes. Yes. I don't need any auto parts, but I better get some quick. I know. Do you need <laughs> They're practically paying you. You Bob, just want to gouge your UPS man. Bob, you look like a man that needs an alternator. I don't know why. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. So Yeah, I do. You better get on that. Bosch <laughs> makes some fine right alternators. Now. So advanced auto parts. We thank them for their support, and we hope you visit them via roundaboutshow.com and rack up some big savings. Because it it's helps a us steal. Out. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks, Christian. Christian, comb over. Anyway, it is now time. <laughs> You're he's just at, jealous. He's at the Naval Observatory. Was that your midsection Mirko uh, photoshopped into there, Michelle? Hmm? <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, I don't know what you're talking about because the audience can't see anything. Honey. Cut it out, Focus Ben. Off. Cut it out. What is Ben doing? Michelle, maybe you what? need a diet Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> ben is marking this so he can trim it from the broadcast. Oh, oh, trimming the fat. That's right. Of my midsection. <laughs> huh? <Now> Craig, anyway. <laughs> what were you saying, Craig? It is now time for our blind spot story of the week. When news topics go unnoticed, are underreported, or otherwise fall off the radar, they land in our blind spot. And this week, we've got a charming little article coming to us via Yahoo Autos uh, from Forbes.com. It looks like talking about brand loyalty. Which company has the highest brand loyalty in the business? We will divulge that momentarily, and it's not who you might think. So, who might you all think? I would guess Cadillac. Mm. <laughs> Michelle is skeptical. No. Hmm. I also am skeptical. Hmm. Well, you guys read the article then. <laughs> I say Saturn. Saturn. <laughs> oh. No, maybe Pontiac. Wait a minute. Studebaker. Well, I- I'm going to preempt you just a little bit hmm. here. So just in the blur- through the little bullet point images, because I read pictures, not <laughs> words. That's a good sound drop, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I read pictures, not words. <laughs> you heard it here it's, first, folks. <laughs> it says Chevy Cruze has 64% brand loyalty. How do they know that people are coming back to buy another Chevy Cruze? Well, is it brand Chevy Chevrolet owners are buying the Cruze, I think is what it is. Chevy Cru- But it says Chevy Cru- I mean, that means something completely different. It but does. I'm thinking when- brand loyalty, brand. Brand, okay. But, yeah. right, but it says Kia. Then it says Fiesta. Hmm. So Fiesta I can understand. Like Fiesta, like you're Olay. like a Fiesta whore. So Yeah, but hang on, Michelle, just a moment. How could you have bought a second Fiesta when there hasn't been a Fiesta for about 20 right, years? Right, exactly. Yeah. That's my point. It's Fiesta. gotta be brand new. Soul. Well, anyway. I, under the Fiesta thing, it says 63% of Fiestas were purchased by Ford owners. So I think they're talking right, about the brand. that would make sense. Yeah. 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 Not blame, blame, the under, blame the editors, the editors at Forbes for... Kia. The cruise doesn't make any sense. Blame the editors at Forbes who wrote the articles because, you know, that their editor doesn't actually look at they it. They don't like captions. pictures. They like words. <laughs> I think I think, no, I think think they got a press release from somebody and, oh, God, how cynical I am. Copy and paste. <laughs> Control C, Control V. Mm. <laughs> I mean, because 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 you look at this and and they're they're mixing the nameplate, the model name, in with the brand, the mark, and it's like yeah. So of course you can say yes. We found a disproportionate number of uh, Studebaker owners are buying Studebakers. <laughs> right. Like, their their press release was from Experian. Who? <laughs> Is that, is that, wait a minute, is that, is that a health uh, drug or something that may cause anal seepage? <laughs> I mean, 
Yes. Wear Alistair dark colored Kane. pants. It was the Alestra <laughs> follow up, wasn't yeah. it? That's right. Anyway, who was the number one brand in loyalty? Surprisingly, it was Kia. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? I'm sorry. I'm a longtime Kia owner. I rebuy the brand. What was your Wait a previous long Kia? Time? Sportage. Wasn't I had a Sportage, Ugh. and now I have a Spectra, and I've been looking at a Soul for my daughter. That previous Sportage was. Hard. Your daughter has no Soul. Is that what I had saying? the original Sportage. Ugh. Original Sportage. She loves the Soul. Loves the, it. The loves previous, the hamsters. The, the previous generation Sportage was probably the worst driving vehicle I have ever been in. But the, Atrocious. it was the first brand new car that I ever owned myself. Hmm. Okay, and, well, no, no. What did, what did you, what, was, what old car did you have before that that wasn't new, Michelle? I'm just curious. Uh, okay, I traded a, a, a Windstar in on it. <laughs> okay, look, I remember I said earlier, the best you've driven is the best you know. You, the, you're right, the Sportage is better than the Windstar. Okay. Exactly. But and is it so though? at that point, I was, you know, just a young mom and I wasn't in the automotive industry and I mm, hated cars. No, Michelle, look, Michelle you, you're actually like a real consumer here, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, having, I am. And, but, but having said that, you know, to say that that's the car you had is like saying you're the healthiest person in the intensive care ward, okay? Right. But, but it's a start. It's a start. Yeah. It's good. Go so ahead. I, I, anyway. I kind of pushed the Sportage in to trade it in on the Spectra, which I paid cash for. High roller. So I, high Jeez, roller. Just cut a ch you're making it rain, Michelle. And so I have owned the Spectra. Let me think. The Spectra is 11 years old now. And it sits most of the time. It sits most of the time. Yeah. But, yeah, Henry wants – she, Henry has a thing. I mean, she's grown up with Kia, so she wants Makia. Uh, she's just, like mm. – she loves the, the soul and – Well, she's going to get herself one, sounds like. Yeah. For, birth, for birthday. Well, can, anyway. can we say that the, the, the validity of this is questionable, highly questionable, because just to the right of this article, in the right column of this article, it says top rated, and then it says category sedans, and number one is the Cadillac STS. Absolutely, yeah. Followed by the, okay, the Hyundai Sonata, I can see Eric, that. It says Ford based Focus, on two reviews, maybe. okay? <laughs> All right, that's two whole people. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. <laughs> I trust two total strangers. <laughs> I mean, come on. So anyway, Kia was the number one with brand loyalty. Nearly 48% of buyers returning to the brand this year. Ford was uh, second highest with about 46.5% repeat business. Chevrolet, Hyundai, Toyota, Honda also did very well. All the brands you would expect. It's uh, funny, isn't it? Because Conquest is this huge deal right now with everybody. Mm -hmm. They even give you incentives for Conquest buyers. Mm. If you're a driver, a lot of times if you're a driver of a Ford, you go to a Chevrolet dealer, they'll give you some more money. Yeah. Right, so he, I'm I'm going to quote something from Jack Hollis that I got when uh, Wednesday, and he said it, it's not well. It's the second part more than the first part that's interesting. Um, it says 70 percent of Scion owners are are new to the Toyota family. Uh, however, eight of ten people who buy Scion stay within the Toyota family. Mm. So wouldn't that be an 80 percent brand loyalty? Don't get me don't get me started on Scion. Okay. Scion. <laughs> It, it is the most fascinating example of, of defeatist marketing I have ever seen in my life. I mean, it's just like, it's... I know. Tested. We thought that Saturn couldn't make it any worse, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I, for, mean, I mean, the, yeah, so, so we, can do, we can do a show on that someday. Yeah, for all the details, roundaboutshow.com, hit the link. You can check it out for yourself. You be the jury, as I always like to say. But <clears> moving along, it's time... You report, you decide. Exactly. Fair and balanced. Ben, it's time for In the Garage. Eric has some stories he wants to share Speaking with us. Speaking of science. Mm. What's up? It doesn't sound like 71 Continental Ben. Yeah, I know. Mm. When Zach yeah. passed away, so did his sound mm -hmm. effect. Okay. We retired that sound right. effect. <laughs> That's a polite way to say it. Anyway, Eric, you recently drove a small Scion, no less. Yes, a Scion Is IQ. Is super small? Yes. They don't get much smaller. No, uh, ten Eric? feet, ten feet in length is is the complete distance of the car, the complete length of the car, uh, and yet it's tagged as well. Certain people in Scion are calling it a four seater, others are calling it a three plus one, and three plus one is far more appropriate. Um, I have to say that unlike the smart car, this is actually a real car. Um, so it's not like torture to drive it. No, it's actually 
drives and feels like a normal car. Um, also, for as small as it is, it's actually fairly wide. So uh, you're not touching shoulders with your passenger uh, or whoever's riding the passenger seat with you as, as you're driving down the road. Uh, it basically has the same. It's got some girth width. to it. Yeah, well, it basically has the same interior width as a Toyota Corolla. Wow. So, um, is yeah, the no, footprint like square? <laughs> it's almost. Yeah. It's not like an isosceles triangle kind of thing, but it's you know, it, it's rectangular. <laughs> but it's barely. not a rhombus. You're saying. Whatever. I, I geometry was so like 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> So um, how'd you like it, Eric? It was it was a surprisingly good. I didn't go in there expecting to hate the thing. I just sort of had a lot of skepticism about mm -hmm. it. Uh, I came away very impressed with the car. It's it's going to be sixteen thousand bucks. It has a very very high build quality to it. Um, the fit and finish in it is really quite good. The materials are 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 pretty good. The 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 material they use for the seats is a little thin, but okay, it's a sixteen thousand dollar car. Exactly. Um, is it but all the yeah, it's assembled in Japan. Um, and they actually said what city and what planet is, and I can't. Is it radioactive? No. <laughs> no. Okay, just wondered. Just wondered. That'd be a bonus. His Blackberry Geiger oh, counter was question. not enough. Um, so, but yeah. all, like, all the plastic in it is is nice graining or just very cool, very nice textures and materials. Um, so it makes the new Camry look even worse? What's that? Makes the new Camry look even worse? Yeah, actually it does. Seriously, it's it's the interior of that is almost better than the Camry in a, in a lot of different ways. Wow. Um, it has a 12.9 foot turning radius. So it almost turns within its own width. So I, I joke in my review, I jokingly said, it turns on a dime and it will give you eight cents change. Um, it has a CVT transmission, and normally that would be, you know, you run away quickly, as quickly as you can from any Continuously CVT. Continuously vexing. Yes. Um, this one was was good. I mean, the fact there was a CVT was almost a non-factor, which is about the highest praise you can give one of those things. The uh, Even what little highway time they gave us on it, it was, it was fine driving down the highway. There were semis going by on 75 and 375, and... It didn't get buffeted around and things like that. Was so, a, it's a 1.3 liter four, isn't it? Cylinder that engine. Is, that is correct. Uh, its acceleration is looking numerically is not quick. Zero to 60 in about 10 seconds. But they're targeting us towards an urban environment, an urban yeah. audience, so where you're just driving around the street. And in stop and go traffic, it's fine. It has no problem keeping up with um, with traffic and feeling zippy. Probably so. wait, well, it weighs you know, nothing. You know, you know the one five from the Yaris that will bolt straight in to that. The end one three and one five are the same engine family. Hmm. Hmm. It's um. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Well, I get. Yeah, it could always use more power, but it's fine. It's rated uh, thirty six miles per gallon city, thirty seven highway, thirty seven combined, which they're saying is, hmm. you know, the highest non hybrid combined fuel economy of any car. Which, given how small it is, the you know big that's, deal. That's interesting. Its combined fuel economy matches its highway fuel economy. That's that's a, a an artifact of the CVT, I suspect. Yeah. When when C, CVTs are good for fuel economy, that's for damn sure. Hmm. Um, I asked them about uh, about a manual or a real automatic, and they said just because it's jet targeted at Gen Y people, and there's about 12 people in all of Gen Y who understand how to drive a manual transmission, uh, the fact that it's targeted for a city environment, uh, the CVT made the most sense. Mm -hmm. So. Very nice. Well, it was it was good. I was actually really really impressed with the car. So Toyota actually has a decent product now that they're introducing. It seems like it's been a long time since they've had actually, something that's well, really really good. The, well, the the, the, the Scion TC I think is actually a pretty good car too. But mm, it's good. I, I don't know. I, this looks better like than, it. It's I'm better be, than the Veloster. Is it? But if you if you don't, the other thing is if you don't like this, you can always buy the Aston Martin version. <laughs> <laughs> right, and pay what thirty five thousand dollars more. You got a little spare money, yeah, a dollar here, here, dollar there, you know, who cares? I actually did fit in the, if you, I, I was actually able to put the seat where I would sit it and get into the back, and it wasn't horrible sitting in the back seat behind the passenger, so. <laughs> Better than the Mini Cooper, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the other That's thing that was unlivable. interesting is, uh, so last thing was that it has 11 airbags in it, uh, which I guess is as money as, or as more than any other car right now. Um and one of them actually is a rear curtain airbag that goes down over the rear glass, seeing as how mm -hmm. if you're riding in the back seat, your head's about an inch away from the back glass. So that's that's good from a crash standpoint and just yeah. you know being impaled by glass and stuff like that. The other one that was interesting is they actually have airbags at the bottom of the seat, 
to push your knees up so that you, you don't submarine underneath. Yeah, yeah, submarine, yeah. Fetal yeah. position. Renault did that on the uh, the Megan a couple of generations ago, and everybody went, "Huh?" <laughs> Submarining <laughs> sounds like a dirty word. So, anyways, it's a family show. Well, thanks, Eric. That's, that's, that's very interesting. Idea. Yeah, you can that, see my review on it on RumbleStrip.net. On where? RumbleStrip.net. Very good. Check it out. Buy stuff Checking now. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to get Michelle back on the horn. She, uh, I don't know, tripped over the power cable or something, disconnected her iMac. So bear with us momentarily as Ben gives her a jingle. Uh oh. She just dropped off Tiny Chat again. Yeah. As soon as I tried to. <laughs> Bob is actually CBT, recording. CBTs are funny. And certain kind of cars done right, they actually work really well. But the idea that the CBT is the uh, complete replacement for your choice of automatic gearboxes is actually wrong as saying that uh, DSGs will replace it. Mm. The only thing a CBT belongs in is should be made by Polaris or uh, Skidoo. Or, <laughs> or what? Doff. Doff were the people that invented it. Oh. The Dutch car company. People go, huh? Eh? They, got, they got bought by Volvo. Mm, that explains it. It's a long story. Volvo thought they were getting the transmission, and what they got was everything but the transmission. Cran breaking. Luke in the chat is asking you, Bob, what kind of car do you drive? Do I drive? Yes. I drive since my uh, my return from my uh, self-employed exile. Uh, <laughs> I am uh, driving the Mazda 3. Ah, uh, ma Matsuda. Matsuda. But my, my uh, non-identical, non-evil twin brother, Moss, he has the more interesting car. He has a, uh, a, a breathed-on CTSV that mm. is real fun. Hennessy version? Uh, this is this is the uh, D3. Oh, okay. Wait, you're but, what, you know, brother? I never, met, I, never, I never met a horsepower I didn't like. Okay. Uh, my my non-identical twin brother. There. There's another See, Hall Jim, brother? Yeah. There, I have Jim, who is my identical twin brother. Okay. And then I have my non-identical twin brother, Moss, who's actually my wife's brother. But Moss uh is... If you put if you put Moss and Jim and I in the same room, it's like there is one giant uh, intellect there. We oh, have dear. we have the same sort of interests. And it's such. Two of you a are hive dangerous. brain. Uh, yeah. The and, Borg. And, and, but this, this is yeah. This is someone who who I think what has happened is we've you know resistance is useless. We brought him into the system as it were. Hmm. But no, Moss is good. He's good value and he has he's value added. He has uh, the only factory teal painted first generation Miata. Hmm. Is he proud of that? Yes, it actually looks very cool. It was one of oh. uh, six cars we did for color tests, and he ended up buying it. Cool. We getting Michelle back on, Ben? You know what? Michelle dropped off the line, so I think we're going to have to continue on without oh, her. And if we okay. see her come on later, we'll take a break. and Michelle! So, I, I see Michelle's name. You do see it? Oh. I see it on the tiny chat. On oh, tiny on the tiny chat. It's very, very small. I have to look real close. <laughs> yeah, because it is a tiny chat. <laughs> oh, 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 she's, oh, 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 oh. she's not on. Uh, Lion must Lion's have crashed. Girl. Lion crashed. Let me Did you see get if the I. Fried chicken? I'll add her to the the. Uh... Oh, giving her a. That's are, so are weird. Are we back? I am. She was sedated was by the aliens. <laughs> no, I'm. Yeah, like I'm having the hardest. Something's weird with my computer. Oh, weird. Like, I can't get it back in the chat, by the way. Oh, sorry. Well, No, it's okay. Like, I, so where were we? Shall we continue? We were finishing yeah. up in the garage with Mr. Tritko. And we so were moving on to... should out of the garage, then. <laughs> we, are, we should do out of the garage, briefly. Michelle, you have an out of garage experience. I do, and you guys are going to, like laugh at me about this one so <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago on this coming sunday my car my z3 died like it sounded like it was gonna start and it just wasn't catching like everything sounded good it wasn't the alternator it wasn't you know the battery it wasn't anything so <clears throat> i just finished doing the um podcast for the primer podcast right yeah. And I had it towed to William from the Primer Podcast local mechanic because I just honestly have never had any problems with my car. And turns so, out you're supposed to change the oil. 
<laughs> well, I do that. I do that. And so on Monday they said, well, we think it's the um, uh, some like uh, RP, some sensor on the beep, blah, 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 like RPM or something like that. And, you know, it's not going to be a big deal. We just got to order the part. So they got the part, and I went to Las Vegas for J.D. Power. Mm -hmm. For a week, wasn't it? Yeah. And they somehow reflashed the computer, and my key stopped working. So there, there's my car in the middle of their garage, and they can't start it. And I'm away. And in order to get, like, a new key, they have to have my driver's license and registration. Aye, 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 aye. So I come back Friday. I have no fax to get them the information. And they're across town, like really long bicycle ride, right? So I, I was just like, okay, you know what? I'll just wait till Monday and I'll fax them everything. Over the weekend, I'm going through my bills and I'm like, holy moly. At the bottom of my bills is my registration that was due at the end of September. Uh, oh, that's great. So you're driving illegally for... Yeah. Not, not, drive, not driving illegally now. Yes. <laughs> right, not driving at all. Problem solved. <clears throat> so, um, Long they, story short. They, they call me and they're like, yeah, so we went to the BMW dealership to try to get a new key once we got your driver's license faxed to us. Your registration isn't current. And I was like, yeah, because I went online to try to register my car. I needed a smog check. But I can't get a smog check without a key to my car to start it. Uh, so you can't um, get a key, you can't get a smog. You are screwed then. <laughs> what the hell are you supposed to do? Move to Michigan where you don't have to deal with this. <laughs> <crap>. <laughs> yeah, this basically, is quite I had a three thousand pound brick that you just <laughs> had fixed for a collision too. Exactly. Uh, this is this is quite a compelling. Um, argument for uh, factory service. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I, I eventually re like talked to AAA because I over-insure. I have like State Farm and AAA. Oh, and yeah. they were like, oh, you can come in and do an incomplete registration. So I finally got a ride in AAA what from my boss. Two insurance? <laughs> this is why? I have two insurance, like health insurance policies too. Like I overinsure. I don't know why. <laughs> that is a huge waste of money, Michelle. Well, it's Craig, see what happens is what what you don't understand is when she got when her car got hit, she filed two insurance claims. <laughs> no, uh -huh. that's not true. One with it's AAA like, and the other with State Farm. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was all that was all paid for by the <laughs> by a, the <laughs> There is a method to madness here. Mm, it's called fraud. <laughs> Well, Michelle, you know. best of luck getting that thing back on the road. <laughs> there you go, level down. Have they determined what's actually wrong with it yet? No. Well, no, because now we have to wait for the key to come from BMW, which is like a Munich whole is a other way process. Far away. Those computer chip things are like just so bizarre. Yeah. It's Why not like I have a clicker on the, on the key, right? Like it's just a normal looking key, but it still has a computer chip in it. Can't they go down the street and talk to Julio, who's got the scanner that just bypasses all that stuff for the chop shop around the corner? You know, I guess the good news is you can't. That's good like, news? Like, no. it's, uh, yeah, because it means that people are less likely. You know, it's not like my 67 Mustang, which though that year of make model, there was only four keys issued for all of them. <laughs> so, like, anybody who just randomly could open your car and take it. So these computer chips, I guess, are protecting us, but it's kind of suck. Well, Michelle, good luck with that. Keep us posted out of the garage. Bob's, like, disgusted with me right now. This is the brave new world I'd have to get myself back into again, you know, just living, living in foreign capitals for years. Carburetors forever, that's what I say. In Sincerely, more... NASCAR. In, in more exciting news, Bob, you have a review of a uh, video game review for us. In this yes. edition of Auto Gadget. Now, Bob, you are an avid gamer. I understand World of Warcraft is your poison. Um, <laughs> in fact, we're keeping you from a guild meeting, aren't we? I'm sorry about uh, that. 
Yeah, it's okay. I'll, I'll get over it. I got over being young. I can get over anything. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. I'm. A, I'm actually a. Uh, uh, in addition to being an old fart gamer, I'm a late arrival old fart gamer. And uh, the the first game console I got was um, a uh, NES to play uh, tag team wrestling on, which was just unbelievable. And uh, I got tired of that after about uh, eight hours, and didn't touch a machine until Gran Turismo came out. The original Gran Turismo. And I was in Australia when it came out. And because of Gran Turismo, my wife bought me the console. And I had tried racing games, and I kept doing GT. And then GT2 came out, and it was great. And then GT3 came out, and I had to get a PlayStation 2. And so I got the PlayStation 2 ready for it, and it was delayed. So I got to get some – I forgot what it was. It was some punch em up and my wife could kick my butt in it, and I got tired of that. But then Gran <laughs> of Turismo losing or of the console? Out. Of the console. Gran Turismo 3 came out, and then I could I could go out, and I was heavy into GT3, and they had this thing on Gran Turismo 1, 2, and 3, where these guys made this little gizmo, and you could go in and change the memory of a game save, and you could change your car from a 115-horsepower Mazda Miata to a Mazda with a three-rotor engine in it. Yowza. And the performance went, and the, the sounds changed, and it was really cool. Wow. I interviewed uh, the producer of Gran Turismo after 3 launched, a guy named Kazunori Yamauchi when I was at Wheels in Australia and asked him about this thing about they called it game sharking and he knew nothing about it but it ended up that when GT4 came out they were encoding the saves so you couldn't do anymore so he knew nothing about it the way that uh, uh, OPEC knows nothing about the price of oil okay? <laughs> but GT2 was late or GT3 was late and then GT4 was late but then the big deal PlayStation 3 coming out Gran Turismo 5 and I buy a PlayStation 3 Gran Turismo 5 when's it coming out it's not coming out. Mm. It's not coming out. Waited, waited, waited. And a friend of mine said, we well, you want to buy an Xbox 360 and try this Forza game. It isn't bad. Forza 3. So I bought it, and it wasn't bad. Then Gran Turismo 5 came out late last year, you know, and I could finally use my PlayStation 3 for something other than a Blu-ray player. <laughs> you can use your – your body is the controller, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you, well, you could. <laughs> but after living with Gran Turismo 5 for a while, I'm not going to because Gran, Tur Gran Turismo 5 has turned into crap. Okay, the game was seven years in development, or five years, or four years, depending which propaganda you listen to. But based on independent announcements and such, it's close to seven. When it came out, only about a quarter of the cars were done. So they have two kinds of cars: premium cars and standard cars. Standard cars have no interiors. The rendering on them is terrible. The wheel arches have Ew. a bunch of yeah, uh, it's just it's just crap. But it's Gran Turismo. Fun. I drank the Kool Aid. It was the greatest thing in the world. Forza 4 came out, okay? I am done with Gran Turismo 5. Wow. I am not the GT5 fanboy anymore. Now, Forza ain't perfect. If you, like, if you like these racing simulation games, both of them are very good. They have some of the same cars. They've got some of the same tracks. They've got some different tracks. Gran Turismo 5 has many more cars, has many more tracks. Um, it looks nice under certain conditions, but certain other conditions, it looks terrible. Mm. Forza is just like an eye-opener, okay? Um, it's a redo of Forza 3 where they kind of focused on making the gameplay a little better and also improved the graphics. You can do things that you can't do in GT5. You can turn the drivers into chimps in the other cars, okay? <laughs> and if, if you're like me and you're not too good at these things, you know, and let's face it, driving with one of these, this is natural? I don't think so, okay? But I'm not bad at it. If, if the other guys can be partially lobotomized, and this allows you to do it. <laughs> um, you can do stuff in Forza. You can do engine swaps. You know, I have a – I've got a VW uh, Rabbit with a 3.2-liter V6 in it and four-wheel drive, and it goes like the clappers, okay? Can you do any of this in Gran Turismo? No, it doesn't happen. If I want to repaint the car puce, okay, I can do that. Can you Gran put Turismo a flathead V8 in it? No, unfortunately, you can't. You can't Damn. do four-wheel drive cars to make them rear drive, you know, which I like because there's nothing, you know. You, you know, there's RWD cars and there's WWD cars, okay? WWF cars. No, WWD, oh. sorry. <laughs> there's right-wheel drive and wrong-wheel drive, okay? <laughs> it's very simple. But Forza <laughs> has, has just taken this thing, and, and they've, they've – and I mean, Gran Turismo is still quite impressive. There's no doubt about it. But the Gran Turismo people have really 
sat back and rested on their laurels. And the, the Forza people, who I suspect the developers, Forza is developed by uh, a, a group in the States, up in Washington, that are actually a subsidiary of Microsoft. So for once, my, the, the, the Gran Turismo crowd was playing a Microsoft by doing nothing for years and years, and Microsoft it, is actually <laughs> taking exactly the lead. Exactly right. Oh. Or, or, you know, I, 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 I told a friend, I said, the video games, the car racing games, are a lot like real car companies, Okay. And Gran Turismo was the Mercedes Benz, high quality, good performance, but they just launched a bad A class, okay, <laughs> and stopped building S classes and E classes. And they think this is good. Let me let me tell you, in, in the game which was late, they didn't have these completed cars with full interiors and nicely rendered. Uh, only about a quarter of the cars are. But instead, what they do have. When you win prizes, you can get horns. There are 275, at least 275 car horns. When you <laughs> press one of the buttons on the control. Wait, hold on. That's not the right controller. You need a PlayStation controller. Here's a PlayStation controller. Here we go. When you press the PlayStation controller, the me, horn me. goes Isn't that great? Okay. Then they have racing suits and helmets. Okay. But they didn't do the damn cars. Now, they've got like hundreds of racing suits and hundreds of Why helmets. do you even do need a horn to customize the horn if the interior of the car isn't done? That doesn't make sense. Well, they, no. Now, hang on. Be just the day before Forza came out, Gran Turismo launched Gran Turismo 5 2.0, and it's upgraded. All the cars have interiors now. Now, the interior, imagine you're looking at the screen, and it has a cardboard black cutout masking where the windows would be. There's no detail. There's no dashboard. This is the interior. Okay? Ain't mm -hmm. that great? <laughs> and and there are more racing suits, okay? And more helmets and more horns. <laughs> And this is an upgrade, and, and, and it's just like completely – it doesn't it doesn't address things. That you buy those games to play them, and Forza is a lot more fun to play. Okay, you know, Forza is like Audi. Are they BMW, Mercedes? Not quite, but they're almost there. Okay, and they're they're improving every year. Well, the other guys, mm -hmm. you know, the Mercedes particularly, they're kind of kind of resting. Hey, we we're Mercedes. We don't need to do anything. They're misappropriating you know? company funds for personal. Well, it's, it's, that's oh, only well. <laughs> and then you put the CFO in charge. That's going to be scary. Mm -hmm. um, but but. Then you've got the Need for Speed series, which as as if they were a car, they'd be like Daewoo, okay? <laughs> Wait, uh, what would they be? Like Daewoo. Remember them? Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, no, the no, Nibira the, the and the Laganza the and the, the Lanos. The good thing about the Need for – well, there's one reason why I want to drive the Need for – one of the Need for Speed things, and that's because I can drive Bathurst. That's it. I bet – I, I – Okay, I didn't know they had Bathurst. So I, they're not a Daewoo, then, then they're a Chevrolet um, Avio, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, so they have the benefit of brand. Okay? Uh, no, Bathurst, Bathurst would be great. But, but the, the courses in – they've got Sebring in, in Forza. And when you drive across the, the curve at the end to the, to the main straight, you drive in diagonally across an airport card stand, and the thing's going bum, 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 bum. It's great. It is just fantastic, and they don't have night racing, which they have on Gran Turismo, and the Gran Turismo fanboys say, well, that proves it's better. Look, I went to the Grand Prix in Singapore at night. It was rat shit, okay? <laughs> so, can I say that on the web? I'm sorry. It was extremely un-nice. Un it was, it was not too <laughs> Un-nice. This they have nice. rain. They have weather change in Gran Turismo, potentially quite interesting, but the problem is the cars are rendered so badly, even the premium cars, that when they rain, there's this funny diagonal clear dome around the car. Mm. Oh go my the, god. It's so bad. The car the wipers go. You know, that's cool. Okay. And you can turn the wipers off, but it doesn't make it blind and you don't crash. So it's no fun. <laughs> um, so they've got all these neat things on Gran Turismo, but forgot the gameplay. Mm -hmm. That's that's the most important thing to have. If you're getting a game, I sure think so. Yes. <laughs> so, Bob, okay. You're very passionate. Forza 4. You love it a lot, especially compared to Gran Turismo 5. Let's quantify these two games. On a scale of 1 okay. to 10, how do you rate each of them? Gran Turismo 5, five. Um, would probably be about a 7, maybe a 7.5. It is not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but for the guys that were the class leader who reinvented the entire genre of mm. these realistic racing games, it's a huge disappointment, particularly considering it took seven years to do it. Forza 4 comes two years after Forza 3, has moved up within striking distance of the best parts of GT5. In some respects, it's mm. better. You get in a premium car in GT5, the steering wheels look like they're made out of toilet paper tubes that have been <laughs> pasted together. In Forza, they're really round. <laughs> what I mean, a novel idea. Wheels, round. 
So, so, so Bob, can so, I PayPal you a hundred bucks for your PlayStation Three? Um, if if I'll be honest, if my PlayStation Three wasn't the good DVD Blu-ray DVD player, absolutely. But uh, thank God it can do. If it was the other way around, okay, and the Xbox game was crap, I'd have a problem because they're lousy DVD players. <laughs> okay. and but if, if indeed it were a good DVD player, I would say absolutely. Because I, I'll tell you, the uh, the Gran Turismo 5 disc ain't going in it anymore. Well, okay, Bob. So you said GT5 was a 7 to 7.5. 7 what, what, what do you rate Forza for, eight, for our eight, buyers eight, this nine, holiday eight, season? Let's say, let's say about, a nine, about Ooh, a 9. Wow. That's pretty good. And you say it's within striking it, it, distance. It could theoretically sneak attack GT5's harbor. Oh, e easily. I think, and I think they would do it not using a Chinese-designed luxury submarine. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a midget Chinese luxury submarine. Uh, All right. there, there's a marketing opportunity there. <laughs> I, it's funny because oh, I've... See, i got to say one thing. Gran Turismo guys know the PR. They know it really well because when you went to the Gran Turismo site, there was a big notice there that GT, there, were, there, was, there was downloadable content coming, which would include more helmets and horns, okay? <laughs> and that the, the producer had, uh, he finished the 24 hours at Nürburgring when he should have been working on his bloody game. <laughs> Wanker! <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. I, the, I, I, the junior I, hall has spoken. I've, I've been torn a little bit of late because I, I want a PS3 as much for us to be a, a good Blu-ray player as, as anything else and then have a few good games in it. Um, but the way that everyone's been talking about Forza 4, um, there's actually a whole drag racing contingent in for in in, for, in Forza Four where people are, are 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 doing it and hopping up and there's a whole race series drag racing series online for Forza Four people. I'm like, and and the fact that Xbox 360 can make a really good um, home theater in a box kind of extension thing. It's yeah. got now, now I don't know what to get. It has the Zune Marketplace. Where can you go wrong? So uh, what? Huh? <laughs> and with that, huh? Bob, thank you for your, your uh, little uh, wrap-up there. My of pleasure, the four. Say again? My pleasure. La. You say la at the end of words in Malaysia and Singapore. I don't know why. I guess you do. La. <laughs> okay. All right, la. La. Well, <laughs> now I'd like to talk about our fine friends at Amazon. I mentioned ah, this earlier in the program, if you recall, right. if you were sober. <laughs> Bit of a tease. Uh, here's the deal. <laughs> Everyone loves Amazon. You know that. I know that. We're not breaking any big news here. You can get everything from ebooks to condensed soup to band saws. And of course, they've got nearly anything you'd ever want for a car, and you probably won't pay list price for it either. So here's what we ask The next time you're ready to buy your next, well, whatever from Amazon, please think of your good pals at Roundabout. Just go to roundaboutshow.com and click on the Amazon banner on right at the top of the page, and you'll get a good deal, and you'll help support us, your fine friends. Every week, we're going to try and highlight one of our favorite products, whether automotive or not. And this week, what would be better than the game Bob just highlighted? Forza Motorsport 4 for the Xbox 360 console. Like we said, you'll be hard-pressed to pay MSRP for anything on Amazon, and this game is no different. Instead of $59.99, you'll only pay $55.99. Not a bad saving. And if you're a member of Amazon Prime, you get free two-day shipping. Again, next time you're ready to buy something from Amazon, click on the link, roundaboutshow.com, and buy whatever it is you were going to go buy when you were going to buy something from Amazon. You'll pay the same low prices, and you'll help us, your favorite little automotive podcast that good. Good. <laughs> Choo-choo. Thanks again to our friends at Amazon for their support. Beautifully written, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. He pounded that out <laughs> before we uh, started here tonight, folks. Uh, and He's a real Hemingway. I think Eric says it best. Buy stuff now. But first, click on the Amazon link. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone to be clicking on link for big trouble for all of you. I can guarantee it. He's trouble. Hello, my name is Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ben, we got another segment. More, more Bob Hall. He's going to wrap some things up for us in the show here. We Design call it Hall. Design Hall. <laughs> got the sound sting here. Am I supposed to be saying something? Probably. Do, I don't do, 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 do. Just fill it in with banter. Very nice. I love so Masterpiece So what is theater. Design Hall? A look at well, uh, design. Something stolen from my brother. Oh. <laughs> the great usurper is here tonight. I can't tell them apart. 
they are identical twins. So we have, a, we have a couple short takes yes. to start off with, a couple things that appeared in the news. The first one here is Holden restoring its first ever concept car, the 1969 Hurricane. Or what's Hurricane? What's that all about, Bob? Get I. Get I. The, the Holden Hurricane was the, the first purpose-built uh, concept car the guys at Holden did in uh, Australia. And GM uh, founded Holden back in 1948. Um, they built uh, uniquely Australian cars, which were, quite frankly, derived from American engineered uh, bits at the start. And by the late 60s, they were really getting heavy into new product. And they had done a locally developed V8 engine. And it was a small thing. It was like 253 cubic inches, I believe. And they used the, the Hurricane as the place to display it to the public. And it was a mid-engined two-seater. It had a lift-up canopy. And it had some really cool stuff. It had a nav system. Okay, This is 1968. They, they conceived it. showed it in 69. It had... Um, uh, a rear view camera what? okay for reversing now the cool part was that the nav system and the rear view camera used a about a, a 12 inch tv monitor uh, tv screen like an CRT? old black and white screen initially yeah crt <laughs> and the, the, the nav James system like the buick it was Rayana very it was very james Bond. the the nav system was going to use magnets planted in roads okay because no satellites you know uh. it was actually but it, but it, the thing was it worked and the car was drivable it's and a very pretty was, car it is kind of cool for the era. It's fantastic. Yeah. And, and also, Holden's design staff was unbelievably small. Okay, they didn't they didn't have a full scale short statured or um, they didn't have a lot of people. Okay. <laughs> that work? Okay. Um, the the guy uh, when I was back in Australia, it must have been about ninety three or earlier. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So it was later than that. Michael Simcoe is a head designer at Holden, a really good egg, and I think he's doing uh, North American design for GM. But Michael took me out at Fisherman's Bend at their headquarters and showed me the hurricane. Now, in those days, I looked and he said, we're going to restore this. And I said, yeah, like hell you are. <laughs> and they did a great job on the thing. And How it bad was it? See it? It 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 made your uh, really bad barn find okay look ready for Pebble Beach. Wow. <laughs> It was, it was like, you know, it was almost like, he goes, well, this is the hurricane. I say, well, which one? You know, it was everywhere. It was all across. Oh. This, this, it was great. And uh, the Holden guys did a super job with it. And it's, it is neat because the, they've got a great studio down there. The Holden guys do some really impressive design work. They always have. Okay. The FJ. Oh, FJ, yeah. FJs are great. And, of course, one of my favorites is the, the, uh, the one no one likes, the EJ. And I like it because nobody likes it. Mm -hmm. Contrarian. Um, uh, no, they, they had good. They had good stuff. And, uh, well, something a little closer to home. We got a Ford concept as well that just surfaced from 1994. What's your take on this swoopy thing? <laughs> <laughs> that that was a uh, a well and truly a WTF for me. Okay, because I was trying to figure out, you know, how did this thing get out? Yeah, you know? it looks like a catfish. They they designed the '96 Taurus after it. I don't know. Uh, I think the 96 Taurus would have been an improvement. Uh, <laughs> maybe not. But, yeah, this is – it's it's very unusual uh, in my experience when uh, concept cars actually get out of concept car uh, – I mean, usually companies I will, will scrap them or destroy them, and occasionally they sneak out. And that's why this was interesting to me. Now, having said that, this was launched when I was in Australia, and I remember looking at it on uh, um, a website and thinking – it, it reminded me kind of of a um, – somebody found – remember the fish that Michelle was talking about, the coelacanth? This was like – this was a flounder, okay, that got chrome-plated. <laughs> chrome-plated flounder. This looks like a, a design for something that was in the Cars movie because of eyes and the mouth yeah. on it. It looks very, very Cars, Cars yes. 2 kind of thing. It's very anthropomorphic, isn't it? Uh, well, I mean, this is this is also. Let's be honest. 1994 was not a high point of Ford design. Mm. Okay, they, they were they were doing some scary stuff back then. I'm sure there was some logic to it, but um, the logic would escape. Me. Well, at, at least was one the only trait thing they did back that far. The GT90 was that, or is that earlier than that? GT90 was after this, I believe. I thought the GT90 happened because I, I moved to Australia in '93. And the GT90 came out when I was in Australia. Now, it was a bit of an eye-opener, as I believe, thinking, whoa, you know, this is kind of cool. Because I remember, you know, the, the Taurus, you know, let's face it, the 19, was it 95 or 6 Taurus, the second-generation car? Mm -hmm. That was a, it was and still is an assault on the eyes. Hmm. 
Well, I see but one trait on this truck concept that made it to today, and that's the gigantic o Ford oval on the bed on the tailgate. Massive yeah, looking well, thing. It's it's of course it's it's offset. Okay, it's, yes. it's not centered. If they put it in the center, they could make it bigger. I wonder if they made it, you know, maybe like about three feet across. What do you think? Why not? Like a giant sticker. Coming that? soon to a theater or drive-in near you. What do you think of this, Michelle? This with this move on the auto by tell pages? <clears throat> no, probably not. <laughs> Number one, it's on, it's on eBay. <laughs> Power stroke oh, concept. It's a die turbo or a di. I'm not sure. <laughs> you be the jury. Yes, well, right. the well, jury, uh, the jury ate out with this one, and it, uh, it, it. Uh, they're a hung jury. Like, they hung themselves. I'll be looking for a Gogo Mobile on um, e eBay before this. Right. Well, that was the short take of the design hall. Those two vehicles, the Holden Hurricane and the 1994 Ford Power Stroke concept. But we've got another more in-depth topic you wanted to discuss, Bob, and that is the bangle butt, infamous. The bangle butt, the infamous and despised bangle butt, <laughs> and. I'm sure everybody remembers when the uh, the blokes <coughs> at BMW launched the – oh, boy, which one was it? E – I get my E numbers mixed up. But the uh, the 7 Series a couple of generations ago where Chris was chief designer and had that boot lid – sorry, trunk lid that kind of ri rose up above the fenders. And it was called the bangle butt, and it was hideous, and it was awful. And just people were crapping all over how terrible it was. It doesn't matter that that 7 Series sold better than the car it replaced. It was still awful. But what was interesting to me is a lot of people copied it. Yes. Okay. Think think of a modern four-door. I mean, to me, the, the most The Camry has it. You can see it on the Toyota exactly Camry. Exactly right. Exactly. And this is this horrible bangle butt that's so awful. Right. Um, and it ended up that, uh, you know, was it, was it again? Chris, Chris is a damn good designer. Okay. Um, I... I hesitate to use the term brilliant, but, but it probably applies in his case. Well, didn't but Adrian von Hoydonk design that, actually? That's what I heard. The, the, secret, the secret, though, okay, this is the thing, is that it had to get approved and promoted by somebody. Ah. And, and Chris went with it, okay? And I, I had heard it was actually rather unpopular at BMW. And there was a period of time shortly after the launch when the only real uh, – Weather vane they had were the press and the advanced uh, reviews of it from people who had seen it who didn't care for it. Yeah. But then it started working. And, and uh, Nissan did a car called the Tiana, which was basically the U.S. Maxima undercarriage with a different upper body. And the, the original first-generation Tiana is a very interesting car. Um, the interior on it is – I mean, I have to admit, it, it completely blew me away. The chief designer uh, brought in – and this may sound crazy, but it worked out. Well. Uh, brought in this dog, okay? <laughs> brought this dog into the studio okay, and let the damn thing go, and it, it, it found the best. It marked its favorite It has model, puppies, and... so to speak. No, he brought in, he brought in a, a, f a couple of furniture designers, and the furniture designers came in and did some stuff on material usage and applications, which the designers then put in the dashboard of the first-generation Tiana. Is, it's just – it's really unique and really, really stunning. And the exterior of the car was quite neat, but it had – probably the most blatant ripoff of the bangle butt anybody had done. And nobody bitched about it. Funny thing there. <laughs> it's still hideous, though. What's that? The bangle, the bangle butt? butt? Yeah. I, What's your you design stand? If you were designing a car right now, would you incorporate yeah. some of these trends? No, I'll tell you why I wouldn't, I wouldn't do a bangle butt now, but it has, it has nothing to do with whether it's good, bad, or otherwise, okay? It's because... If I was designing a car now, it would be for four years down the road, and I would like any design I would do to last more than the usual four to six, mm -hmm. okay? So you'd be forced into simplicity and not picking something that was too trendy on too many cars now. Mm -hmm. So I would I would probably go with something a little bit more trad or maybe even, dare I say it, do a hatchback because I still think hatchback – it's really cool, even though the public doesn't. You know. Well, your your brother just did a, a whole uh, diatribe on hatchbacks in the American. Did he really? Market. Yes, this week on Autoline Daily. I think it was Tuesday when he was the guest host for us. I'll have to look it up in the archive of the show. And he said, I think I... there's an inside joke. Samson Rolamite. What was Samson on the show? You could say no, that. I, uh, I can't comment. I can't, can't comment on that. Sorry. <laughs> subject. How about the Third Man? What a great movie. <laughs> what a great audience. And and really quick, you heard that chirp. Michelle unfortunately had to go. We've run a little long this week, so she had to go without saying goodbye. But, but we'll Bull 
Bleep. Bleep. All right. Well, I think we'd better wrap up this show. Uh, I think that's about it. But uh, Boberto Alejandro. Si, cosa fai oggi? Senorita. Do you have a website you would like to plug, Bob? Do I? Yes. Well, um, I have a website called the, the Blob Zone that I, uh, I uh, apparently put my babblings on from time to time, but I can't remember the uh, URL because I don't think I've updated it since 2006. But mm. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> GeoCities is gone, it's remember. Frozen moment in time. Okay. No, it's still there. It's still there. I went and looked at it the other day. Okay, so I'll subscribe to the RSS feed and get all the latest yeah, stuff from exactly, five exactly. years ago. Yeah, just, just Google, just Google the Blob Zone, B W O B Z O N E. Okay, right. Thank you so much. <laughs> give him all this traffic for a website that doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> Michelle Naranjo, thank you for joining us. What are you working on on the Autobytel dot com? I'm working well, on Autobytel. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, we're getting reviews done. I just went to Vegas. We did some JD Power stuff. I don't know. Oh, Thank just you for joining us, Michelle. You understand you got a, a whole herd of animals that need to be tended to. That's right. I got to go. But Shovel also, don't, don't forget, I got that open line podcast, and you can get that at bit.ly slash open line. Well, thank you, Michelle. Always a pleasure having you on. Thank you, Craggy. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Tritko, rumblestrip.net, rumblestrip on Twitter. Yes, sir. When can we see a Toyota IQ review up? Trick right question. Now. It's already up. Right now. Wow. What about Ford F one fifties? That should be coming soon. Mm. Uh, I've got that and a few others I need to finish writing up. So I've got four free uh, four reviews that are in different processes of being written up. So hmm. uh, been a little been a little busy and occupied with the other job, which is at IMAX Web. And uh, by the way, we if you know if you are a Junior content person with a bent toward social media, we are looking to hire. Hmm. You hear that? Heads up. Mm. Well, oh, thank you, Eric. May I, may I poke in here just for a second? Please. The, the, the URL for the Blob Zone is bwob.wordpress.com. Yes, it's one of those silly blog things. Is that a dot .gov? <laughs> oh, no, I dot, see dot, it. Dot, dot. It's got a Buick logo. Oh, that's WordPress. <laughs> well, Bob, Bob dot WordPress dot com. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again. <laughs> Eric Tritko, thank you. It's always a pleasure having you, Bob. And we really mean that. You're welcome back anytime. Ah. I feel the same way. I, <laughs> March 24th, I know what you 2008 mean. was your last blog post. Ah, uh, yes, it was. That was uh, the, the press release from the Space Hag. I remember mm, it now. Very well. But, hey, don't it's miss your thing. chance to win $100 by listening to Roundabout on your smart-equipped telephone using a neat little applet called Stitcher. Just go to stitcher.com slash roundabout. Then when you register your new account, don't forget to enter the promo code roundabout. One of our lucky listeners will win $100 each month, and that's enough to pay for your data bill. Remember, you can watch Roundabout Live every Friday evening starting at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time or 3.30 on the West Coast if you're in Bob's neck of the woods. And don't forget to check out the rest of the Autoline family of fine programs, including Autoline This Week, Autoline After Hours, and, of course, Autoline Daily. And uh, remember, we're collecting questions for an as-yet-unnamed automotive expert that we will be having on the program in the future. So get us your um, automotive technical questions, you know, how repair-related things or maintenance. We need those from you. You can email them to us at roundaboutshow at gmail.com, or you can get in touch with us on our Google Voice number. It's 1559-ROAB411 or 1559-762-2411. We're on Twitter and Facebook, twitter.com slash roundaboutshow, facebook.com slash roundaboutshow. Pretty simple. If you can't find us, just bing it and decide. If you never want to miss an action-packed episode, and frankly, who doesn't, you can subscribe to this show on iTunes or the Zune Marketplace. It's a great way to stay in touch, keep up on the latest roundabout. Isn't that right, Ben? That's right, Craig. And with that, thanks to all of you out there listening. Please join us again next week as we circle the roundabout. We'll talk to you then. <laughs> Good show, everyone. And that's another roundabout. Sorry I babbled on too long. No, no, not at all. Nonsense, Bob. Nonsense. Just like This is big <laughs> this is big fun though. I get my enjoys from this. This is good. Well good. we'll have you back, Bob. Maybe we can have you on with your brother again and we can do a design hall face off. 
Oh, that could be fun. Hey, what what happened to the stuff that got videoed on the um, still Hall Hall? still working on it? <laughs> okay, just just wondered, just wondered. That was enormous fun doing too. Yep. Hey, hey, Bob. If you go to, to go to over to my site, rubblestrip.net, the second yep. article down is the IQ. Not oh, that cool. you haven't. I see that. Yeah, not that you have probably. I was gonna say not that you probably didn't see it from other parts of the world. It's been on sale for three years, but I mean, you really get the idea of just how small this is. Well, you know, it's funny. You mentioned 10 feet. It's the length of an original mini. Wow. Yeah, you're right. 10 feet, right? Yeah. And, and that, that, that's to me where it, it, somebody needs to, to, to high, uh, hit on that, I think, you know, with, with the vehicle. I don't think anybody's bothered with it, but that, uh, that makes tons of sense. Now, I, I gotta, can, I, can I do my mini rant here on Scion? Please. Okay. The, the reason I call it defeatist marketing was it all came about from a bunch of young, young Turks at Toyota who said, gosh, Toyota's boring and their kids won't go into a Toyota dealer to buy a car, blah, blah, blah. We need to come up with a youth brand. Now, the problem I had was if they took all the money they spent on developing Scion to work on finding something to do to improve Toyota and taking and developing unique product for Toyota, they wouldn't have needed Scion and the whole brand would have gotten an uplift. You mean like, this is like, call it, this is, like huh? not destroy the Celica? <laughs> Well, it, it was it was on its on its last leg. See, one of the problems with the Celica is the damn car lost its support in Japan. Mm. And regardless of how big anything is in in a Japanese company, with the possible exception of Honda, okay, if you don't have support for it at at the mothership, it's it's never going to get the resources it needs. And that's what happened to the Celica, okay. And and it lost it on two grounds. Excuse me, the the, the the Celica was a real problem. The Japanese domestic marketing division didn't want it. And then the other problem they had was that the engineering group didn't want to do it. So when you lose those two, you're cooked. If you can keep if you can keep one of them in, they're workarounds. But Toyota's a really weird outfit in that, and, and I'm I'm not altogether convinced um, that that they should have done Scion because in a way you think about it strategically, it, they've they've diminished the brand rather than improved it. And and if somebody says, well, you can't turn a brand around like that, look what's happened with Buick. Very Whether good. you like the cars or not, I mean, they've, 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 oh, the and how they've done it, awesome. they've done it with product, yeah, <laughs> and and I mean, and, and Cadillac too, you know, it's it kind of with their two cars. Karen, well, Karen's brother, okay, Karen's brother is, he is, dyed in the wool Japanese car nut, okay. He had a he had a peripheral port RX3 he ran on the street, okay, and. We joke with each other, you know. He said, if you had talked to me 10 years ago and said I'd drive a Cadillac, he said, I think you're completely nuts. So, you know, you, you can do things with brands. And I think that what they did with, with Scion, I mean, do you, you guys know Joe Tethero, straight up PR? Know the name. Okay. Tethero said to me he went at the Scion launch, he pulled me aside, he said, there's only one good thing about Scion. He said, if it goes over and dies, the one thing we got out of it is in order to get the Scion franchise, you had to accept – an upgrade for computer back room, which because of the franchise agreement with Toyota, they couldn't force the dealers to take. <clears throat> and he said, that's the real benefit to it. We're forcing these guys, they all want Scion, and to get Scion, you gotta get the computer. So we'll be able to get them to the computer. So we can shut Scion down in two years, we've done what we wanted to do. <laughs> it's a, and, it's and that's an expensive the, computer upgrade, but okay. Yeah, but but that was his point. If, if the brand dies, the, the, the big concern they had was the dealers, because the, the franchise agreement was written in such a way they couldn't force the dealers into it. But I, I really think that they should have invested all that time and effort in Toyota. And now, look at what's happened. It comes around full circle. They've got this FT86, this new rear-drive Corolla, right? Mm. It wasn't a Scion. It's a damn Toyota iconic car. It's it's the only iconic car Toyota ever did. After I left Wheels and I was the world's only freelance product planner, I did a job for Toyota Australia, which was a concept car they sent to Japan. That was a rear-drive FT86, modern FT86 using Alteza bits and pieces, Okay. The only thing – it didn't look anything like what you saw. The only design element that was you looked at, and you didn't see it unless it was pointed out, was the daylight opening. The window side graphic was identical to an FD, or an old AE86, and it was called 86-21. And I went up, showed it to them in 2006 with Ken Asano, did the uh, – no, not 2006, crikey, 2002. Um, showed it to the board and everything. They looked at it, said thanks very much. Nobody understood it. And, went. and it's, the thing is that's the only iconic car Toyota had, and they're making it a bloody Scion. And it just doesn't make sense to me. You know, they're, they're, they're oh, well. You, but, hey, Bob, question there. for you. How did Sir. you and your brother, the senior hall, um, 
get interested in cars because if I if I remember correctly, Jim told me your father was like an airline American Airlines executive. Um, yeah, that does, was he in, big into cars then? Is that where you guys got it Hugely. from? Or was he? Hugely. Okay. Okay. He 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 been a car nuts when he went to Europe mm. to go kill Nazis, <laughs> and then when he came back, he had he was in England and he got the British car sickness. And he bought a bunch of English sports cars, okay? And and Jimmy and I literally grew up in them, okay? Hmm. And that's Sweet. that's that's where we got wow. it. My dad would, would drive anywhere within 500 miles to go see a motor race. And I don't mean NASCAR. I mean like sports car racing. Wow. Awesome. And we were, we were doing the Pebble Beach thing back when there were races through, through Pebble through Beach the between the trees. Yeah. yeah, you know, so – that's where we picked it up, and, and I actually wanted to be an airline pilot. My dad started as a pilot. But the problem was American Airlines, the airline he worked with, worked for for 42 years, wow. had a no – had an anti-nepotism policy. You couldn't get a job there if you had like a cousin. Uh. So the next thing I want to do, okay, cars. I want to go work at a car company. And I started out initially dropping out of university because Ronald Reagan had cut a lot of classes when he was governor of California to balance the budget and uh, got a job offer from Motor Trend where I worked – um, I was going to work for a year and go back to uni, and I never went back. Hmm. Wow. Well, fascinating. You. So you guys were steeped in yeah. the automotive world. We, we, it's, it's, we've been uh, exposed to having uh, car sickness for many years. So did you go to Design Center? No, well? Jimmy did. Jimmy did. I didn't. Okay. Fascinating. Jimmy did. I did. I'm, I'm the, the college dropout. <laughs> You'd never guess, Jim, uh, Bob. <laughs> you two yeah, are Bob, so we're... similar. It's, uh, it, it's crazy. It's like you were, like, like, I don't know, like twins or something. You could say that. Mm -hmm. isn't, isn't, isn't that amazing? <laughs> How does that happen? It is a biological anomaly. It is beyond my Ken or my Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to thank our chatters, Ben, before I forget. Let's run through our chatters. Who's, who's stuck around? We've got Luke Cranbrake, and he was here before the show even started. Thank you, Luke. Ready and waiting. Champing at the bit. We've got Gorski C., our um, quick-witted fanatic. Thank you, Gorski. Yes, G or Gorskik, if you prefer. Gorskik. Gorskik. Baba. <laughs> Mud Monster is uh, a friend of the show as well. William Maley, or Malley, however you want to say it. I think it's Irish. That would be my guess. Well, you Molly. We've got Scott in Cleveland from the beautiful banks of Lake Erie in northern Ohio. Lovely town, and at least it's not Detroit. Roundabout 353 just popped into the chat room. We welcome you. 353, that is a prime number. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> we welcome you, whichever gender you may be. And we've got Willie D. Willie D. A new fan we've turned on to the program. You sure it's not pronounced Willied? You never it's like know. a verb in the <laughs> you past <got> tense. <laughs> Ooh, you got Willied. How mm. embarrassing for yeah, you. Well, that's what Michelle got in her car there. Yeah, yeah. You really shouldn't talk <laughs> right. about your Willie on, uh, on a podcast. Family podcast. <laughs> it's a family show, Ben. Roundabout 353 says, been here all along for Bob, well, there you go. Miata Father. No, no, He's kind of, uh, I, I introduced the parents. So I was kind of the Nakodo. This <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alex, real quick question, if I may. How is the electric power steering in the IQ? It's it's fine. It's actually it's a little light, but the steering is fairly direct. I, it, it's, I not did, go -kart, uh, it's not go-kart. It's not go-kart direct, but it's not okay. too far from it. When when I when I uh, I did a thing on the uh, smart for Japanese magazine and. Uh, I, I when they came out with it and I drove the thing and I said the electric power steering feels directly connected to a car in another city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, I think we're going to wrap things up here in D Town. But uh, okay. Eric, thank you, Bob. The original as, recipe as, hall. No, Jim's original. I'm I'm, oh. I'm the uh, I'm, you're I'm extra the second, crispy. The second dish. Uh, as, <laughs> As that uh, doctor used to say on, uh, what was the guy? Dr. Hattori on Iron Chef. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brilliant. The funny Brilliant. thing is, is, when you were going through all that at the beginning, I was trying to pull that up about Iron Chef to throw in like two or three names in there just for, you know, whatever. So it's funny. <laughs> yeah, I, it, 
because I couldn't remember Hattori's name. And I love that. He always said, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> and the reason they, they had to dub it when they did, because he the word he said was, Yoroshiku, that's it. And there's no way you're going to get, it's always a pleasure out of that. So when right. he's out of sight, you can go, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> no dubbing problems. Lovely. Oh, that's good. That's it, guys. You are Thank quite Thank you so much. Fluent. I appreciate the invite. This was fantastic. Yes. Thank you, Bob, for your time. Thank you for your knowledge. It's been great. You're welcome back anytime. Anytime okay. you want to come back, you've got an open invite. Give us a and, shout. Yeah, you guys let me know, too. It's Definitely. Okay. And anytime you're in town for whatever, oh, let us know. Absolutely. We'll, well, well I, want to see, I want to see the new secret headquarters, too. Oh, yes. You're missing Super out. secret. Even Eric hasn't been there yet. Yes. Oh. Hey, a quick question. The sure. the um the phone app is that is that only for iPhones or do you have it for we we pour uh uh, uh Android. Android. It slugs. should be for Android. Android, BlackBerry, and iPhone, I believe. I'll have to go visit then. Yes. What Android. app? Sorry, I missed. Stitcher. Oh, the Stitcher. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, what do you have, Jim? Bob or Bob? <laughs> oh, oh, hi. <laughs> 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 I can't see you guys. Yet. <laughs> I, I have the uh, I have a uh, just an Android. Yeah, I think they should have a version for Android. Yes. Yeah. So, Eric, did you get iPhone 4s? November 27th. Okay. Why the little Why the delay? Contract. Because that's when I'm eligible for an upgrade at a reasonable price. Yeah. Very nice. I knew you said you were going to wait for the next gen, so I'm just you go on Verizon. Second. Yeah, that's who we have a contract with, because, and Catherine gets 21% discount because she works at GM. So. Verizon. Well, 21% on the monthly contract, not on that purchase price, but yeah. still. Still great. Oh, well, One-fifth off. Come on. Yep. So, Well, thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Like okay, I said, we'll Bob, you, anytime. Anytime. No Take care. And right, I'll, I'll, work on, I'll, work on, I'll work on doing some, uh, some um, roundabout video stuff for you that you can use for whatever. Cool. Yes, awesome. We look forward ben to was it. telling me a little bit about it. He had to talk to you, I guess, last night. So I, I'm intrigued. Okay, we'll see you guys. All right, thanks, All right, thanks. again. Bye, Bye, guys. See you. Bye. See you, Oh, we need the title. Oh. Well, this Occupy Roundabout. Occupy Roundabout's pretty good. There's another one he said I forgot. Um. Oh, Well, there was one other. I, I read pictures, not words. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Occupy Roundabout or I read pictures, not words. I kind of like I read pictures, not words. Mm -hmm.